has anyone measured the four dimensions of the subconscious mind, it might be a good trick if you could do it. And if there were any devices long enough to reach from end to end, the answer might come up as the nth power of the infinite, which only an Einstein could fathom out. And there is such a shortage of Einsteins, isn't there? Such men are rationed out of top priority by the universal director of scarce commodity allocation. In just a moment, you'll hear the story of how a mind or spirit, if you wish, reached into infinity out of the void of death. It is called The Kiss of Kismet and stars Barton Yarborough, a tale which grew from the seedlings of a strange and primal obsession. The name India suggests many things, doesn't it? The Taj Mahal in the moonlight. The funeral ghats burning along the banks of the Ganges. Kipling's Kim. Steaming jungles. Indian Fakirs performing the impossible. The great King Cobra, deadly in its hooded wrath. Striped tigers stalking through the banyan grove. And elephants bedecked with jeweled trappings and a gold-encrusted howdah bearing some fabulous maharaja. Oh, yes, and the monsoon. But let me give you another picture of India, a place called Kardong Pass, which lies north of the ancient city of Leh. Elevation, 18,000 feet, where even in midsummer, the snow lies thick along the caravani trail. Picture, if you can, an exploratory party approaching this pass, the tiny shaggy ponies plodding warily along the precipitous ledge. A man named Warburton commands the train, and I don't think you're going to like him. Russell! Russell! What the damnation is the matter up there? Wait a moment. What's the matter here? Get that horse onto its feet. I think he's hurt his leg, Sahib. Nonsense. Just lazy, that's all. Here. Here. Give me that bridle. Come on. Get up. Get up. You lazy beggars. Get him on his feet. Good God, he's trying to get up. You go back where you belong, will you? I'll attend to this. Come on. But the, poor, be- the poor beast is hurt, Warburton. Look. Look how that leg's twisted under uh, him. I suppose we'll have to take the pack off him. Put it on the other horses. Oh, but, Roger, they're overloaded already. We've come such a way since morning, and they're so tired. Can't we camp here? We're going as far as Tano tonight. Well, I don't see how we can do it with a lame horse. Then we'll shoot it. Russell, get my rifle. Yes, sir. Mrs. Warburton, uh, perhaps yes, we'd better sir. go back and wait. Look how the color of the peaks have changed in the sunset. I wonder how many sunsets they have seen since the world began. They must be very old, very wise, these mountains. What if they could talk and tell us what they know? The very secret of life itself. I've heard that they can impart their knowledge to those fitted to receive it. Slide. Yes? You love me, don't you? What? Why, I... We're out of the world somehow up here. We don't have to lie and dissemble anymore. We don't have to act according to its petty deceit. We're... We're beyond all that. Clyde, I love you. Grace, you... Do you love me? Oh, yes. Yes, I do. I do. I... Oh, but I can't tell you that. I don't dare. I'd be a cat. I'd be a coward. Those are only words, Clyde. Little hypocritical words with which we make a chain to bind ourselves. You aren't a cad. You know you are. You're fine and strong. Oh, I want you to be strong. I want you to be strong enough to break your chains and my chains and take me away. You... You mean away from Roger? Yes. Oh, I think the mountains have imparted to me some of their knowledge. 
The knowledge that we have a right to be happy. That our lives are our own. I've never realized it before. I've only thought what I was told to think and done what I was told to do. But now, now... Oh, but I... you... You can't be in earnest. Oh, but I am. I'm dreadfully in earnest. Clyde, you're... You're not afraid, are you? No, not for myself. I don't matter. But you do. You matter more than anything in the world. Oh, you can't. You can't do it. You... You couldn't face a scandal. You... You couldn't stay here. You couldn't go back to England. We wouldn't have to. We could go to America. No one would know us. No one would ever find out. And we could be so happy there. Oh, yes. Yes, we could. Roger will be returning to Swinegar soon. We'll wait till he goes. Then... Then we'll leave. We can catch a boat No, no, no. No, that won't do. We've got to be honest in this thing. We can't sneak away like thieves. I'll tell him. Oh, no. Yes. Don't you see, we've got to. We've got to face him and tell him. It's just as you say, Grace. We don't have to lie and dissemble anymore. I'm going to tell him. Tonight. As soon as we make camp. Have you lost your way, my children? Oh, I... I'm sorry if I frightened you. My Grace, it's... It's a llama from the monastery. That's all. It is getting dark. And you were so busily engaged, you did not see me approaching, I fear. Have you lost your way? No, uh... Why, no, our, our party is on ahead. We're, we're going to Tano. To Tano? Yes. Yes, we'll, we'll make camp there tonight. You cannot go on. It is getting dark. You will lose your way. Oh, we have guides. We, we've been over the trail before. One must pass over the same trail many times before one knows it. Oh, I, I fancy we'll have no difficulty. The wrong path is always difficult. For out of today, tomorrow is made. And if today is error, tomorrow will be error. And the next, and the next, until the end of time. Universes decay, and out of their elements, new universes are formed. And the wanderer must continue to wander. Why, yes, sir. It's quite right, sir. Good night. My children. Oh, money, pardon me. Good night. Clyde, where did he come from? Why, up the trail, I suppose. Why, no, he didn't. I was looking at the trail all the time. There was no one near us. And all of a sudden, he was here, standing here. Well, those chaps go long distances at times and walk with almost incredible rapidity. I've heard it said that they induce a sort of hypnosis, practically hypnotize themselves, and travel by what amounts to walking in one's sleep. When they wake up, why, they're here. They're there. It's not a half bad way to travel. And what was he talking about? What did he mean? He said, out of today, tomorrow is made. And out of tomorrow, the next, and the next, until the end of time. Until the end of time. Please! Please! Quiet! Yes, coming. Will you... you tell him? As soon as we make camp, Hatano. Well, uh, by Jove, it's commencing to snow. Where in damnation have you been? Don't you see it's getting dark? We're only around the bend of the trail. I've been shouting for you for the last ten minutes. We came as soon as we heard you. Oh. Don't think I don't see through your little trick. Trying to delay us, so we'll have to camp here. Well, we're not camping here. We're not stopping until we get to Tano, if it takes all night. You don't know how anxious I am to get to Tano. Yes, we're very anxious. Well, don't stand there, Grace. Get on your horse. Looks like we're in for a blizzard. Russell! Yes, I... Start him off! Yes, I... Uh, oh. any further. We've got to go on. We've got to reach Tano. Everything depends on that. The rest of our lives. I know. Where is he now? Up at the head of the column with Rasul. 
It doesn't look like the trail, Clyde. We're lost. I know we're lost. We've taken the wrong path. Oh, now, now we're all right. It's this storm. You can't recognize the trail here. There. Grace, we're taking the the only path that there is to take. I don't know. Wait. Wait a moment. Move back there. Yes. You'll have to dismount and lead your horses. Well, what's that? The trail ahead runs over a ledge. It's covered with snow. We don't know whether it's wide enough for the horses. Somebody's got to go over it on foot first. I see. Well, well, I'll go. Oh, no, no, Clyde. Oh, you better let Russell do it. This wind's blowing a gale. Might not be much of a ledge there. Oh, well, let's have a look at it anyway. Wait. There. There, wait. I'm coming to you. There it is, covered with snow. Hard to tell whether it's wide enough to cross. I wouldn't attempt it. If you lost your footing, there wouldn't be much left of you by the time you hit the bottom of the canyon. Oh, yes, but there'll be no danger if I keep close to the inside edge. Oh, Clyde, Clyde, you mustn't. We'll wait till daylight. You mustn't go. Well, we've... We've got to get to town over. You keep out of this, Grace. Oh. All right, all right. Well, wish me luck. Well, it, it seems wide enough here. Wait a moment, now. How is it there? Still wide enough for the horses. Wait a moment. Roger. Roger, look. It's a slide. Tell him to come back. Hey! Hey! India in a muffling torpor. In the home of Saab and Mem Saab Warburton, the Ponka fans were waving in the humid air. The Mem Saab was escaping from herself at the moment in the notes of some lost melody. Warburton was, in his insufferable way, acting as host to a house guest. That sort of thing might go in England, but not here in India. I say, uh, care for a spot of brandy? Oh, I don't mind if I do. Well, if you'll pardon me, I'll get it. I don't trust the servants with tea. Don't stop. That sounds mighty pretty. Oh, I'm tired of playing. I'd rather talk. Mr. Mortimer, have you ever been to the Buddhist monastery... At Lama Yuru? Well, not exactly, ma'am. I, I've ridden past it. Why? I want to go there. I want to see it. Roger's so busy that he can't possibly get away to go with me. I wonder if you'd mind. Well, I'd be glad to. You see, I, I have a rather special reason for going. Oh, I, I know you'll think it's silly, but... Well, when Clyde Jerome was killed, something strange happened to me. I, I haven't told it to anyone... But you remember, you came riding up the trail just after they'd found him. I see. Hello there. Wait a minute, Jack. Whoa, whoa. wonder if you could give us a little help. We've had rather a nasty accident up ahead. Chap went over the edge of the cliff, swept off the ledge by a snow slide. Wait, I'll have uh, some of my boys come up. Well, that won't be necessary. My own boys have found him at the foot of the cliff. They're bringing him up now. I'd like to have you, well, as a witness. I'm the only white man in the party. A friend of yours? An acquaintance. A chap named Clyde Jerome. <laughs> hurry! <laughs> hurry, can't you? We are hurry, Sahib. The trail up the cliff is slippery. 
Here, let me have a hold of that rope. Get him under the arms there while I hang on to this rope. I have it, Sergeant. Clyde, Clyde. Clyde. You'd better get back. Oh, no, no, I want to see him. I want to see him. If I was you, ma'am. Oh, I've got to. Oh, oh, Clyde. Oh. She's fainted. Rasul, bring some water. Here, we'll take her over there. Grace Grace Grace, don't you hear me? I'm calling to you Clyde Clyde, where are you? I can't see you Stretch out your hand It's so dark No I can't touch you I... You must Listen to me, Grace. I have only a little time to talk. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. I... I loved you, Grace. But I was wrong in loving you. Oh, no, no, no. It wasn't wrong. We could never have been happy. I know that now. Happiness could never come from wrong. It is better that I died. I must go now. Oh, don't go. Don't. Don't. Another moment. No, I can't give you up. I won't. I won't. (laughs) Now, a woman might faint and come out of it, believing that she had talked to a dead man. There is nothing particularly unusual about that. And, of course, there was no question that Clyde Jerome was dead. As I say, it was some months after the accident that Mrs. Warburton went to the Buddhist monastery at Lamayuru. It was late afternoon, the time of the ceremony. Om Mani Padme Hum. now. The Lama? Yes, M. Sab Warburton. Well, well, how did you know I'm... We sent for you. But I... I don't understand. I received no message from anyone. When I... the proper time had run its course, we sent for you. And you came. And you... You are from a faraway country, Sahib. And you will return there soon. Why, well, yeah, yes, I... I'm going back next... Say, how, uh... That is well. For what you will hear today is best not repeated in this country. You will come this way, Mimsa. This corridor is dark, Mimsa. If you will follow closely behind me, this way... was the echo of yourself, M. Saab. Wait here in the chapel. I will send Brother Sharfa to you. He will be here in a moment. Mr. Mortimer, did you hear that music? Why, no. I didn't hear anything. Why, oh, I, I wish we hadn't come. Why did you come anyway? Oh, I don't know. All of a sudden, I... I wanted to come here, but it's so dark and quiet, and that music, I never heard anything like it before. I am Brother Sharfa. Yes. Oh, yes. Mam Saab, you are at war with your life. You wish to change that which cannot be changed, for today is made of yesterday. And yesterday cannot be altered. Why, I don't understand. What do you mean? 
You were in love with a man, and now... Now he is dead. Now he is in another phase, another plane of existence. He must live out his life on that plane as he lived it out here. And you must live out your life here. But why? Why do you tell me this? Because you refuse to let him go. You refuse to let him live out his life in another plane. You refuse to give him up. And because of that refusal, he is handicapped. You must let him go. You must put him out of your mind. Out of your thoughts. Oh, I could never do that. It's all I have. If he asked you to release him. What do you mean? He's in his grave. And if I could bring him back from his grave? Oh, why do you talk like that? You're only tormenting me. He is dead. You have not answered my question, Mem Saab. If he should come and show himself to you, show himself as an appeal to you for his release, then would you believe? Would you? Oh, yes, if you could bring him out of the grave. If you could prove to me that he wants me to forget Oh, then, then I would believe that I would give him up. Grace. Oh, that, that boy. Grace. Oh, no, no, you're trying to trick me. A trick of the voice, that's all, a trick. Grace. Grace, look at me. Oh, Clyde. Clyde. Oh, been listening to Obsession. Obsession.